For me, I've just always loved movement. I kind of like to see the patterns in things as well. And I feel like there are certain patterns in movement. There are a lot of movement practices that are quite random and sporadic and spontaneous. And I, I like spontaneous movement and parkour and dance and expressive stuff. But I also think that there are patterns that we can train as well that there can be a, a more of a structure and organisation to movement training. And when I discovered the rope, that kind of gave me that light bulb moment of, oh, there are patterns that, oh, I can feel this in running, I can feel it in swimming, I can feel it in jumping. That just set me on this whole journey of, of biomechanics and understanding the human body and what are the other thing, what other tools like this rope can I find that help me to train these patterns and help me to understand and can teach me. But then I also feel that my body moves better and it, it, I feel stronger and healthier physically because of it and so then I came across kettlebell and I trained it a bit in the conventional way but I then also saw some people applying the same kind of patterns that we do with the rope you can do with the kettlebell and it makes it a little bit harder and those same patterns are there the same motions of this underhand figure of eight this infinity symbol we can tune into that with different objects and it's really fun that's what I really like about it, is it feels like play. It's not like I've got to go to the gym and do this one hour workout and it's going to be hard work and I'm going to be tired after and have to eat loads. It's like, oh no, I can enjoy it and I can do five minutes here and I can do two hours there because I'm enjoying it so it goes on for longer and then I can still wake up the next day and feel fairly fresh because it's using the whole of the body. It's not isolating muscles in this bodybuilding fashion. It's more, how can I use sequencing and timing and the fascia and the tendons and the ligaments, not just the muscle, to make these movements happen. And then the fact that I can do it for longer and day after day without feeling that ache, it feels like those are little signs that I'm training in a more of a, a better holistic ballpark. And the fact that it's enjoyable, that's another sign to me that it is, is something. And so having discovered them, I wanted to share that with other people. I had this opportunity where I'd found this amazing retreat centre in the Lake District, put 15 tickets out online and had an opportunity then of people that kind of trusted me, that most of them had experienced rope flow before, so they knew there was something in the rope and they were just open to what's, what else has Tim got to share with the body. He's really into the body and let's do it in person. And so I was able to have that space and this time over these last three days with some people to share what I feel is fun and functional with the body as it applies to biomechanics. We've now given the body another cue. So when the left moves, the right has to react to that movement. When the right moves, the left has to react. There's some stability work, because I think stability is the foundation of everything. If we, if we don't have balance in the body, that's, that limits the ceiling on how much strength we can have, how much cardio we can train, how much, you know, that's where the niggles and the injuries come in. But from my perspective, it's a lack of stability. So there's a big foundational bit of stability work with the Swiss balls, and we try to make that fun. So what I love is, is these are all just kind of very early baby posture positions. Babies are on their belly a lot, lifting their head. And this is strengthening all the muscles that support the spine into good posture. Pull the shoulder in, so don't have the shoulder too lifted. You can explore lifted, but for the most part, shoulder sucked in. And then we go into some light lifting with the kettlebells. We learn how to swing, which again, it's these ballistic bounce-like movements, which are gentle on the body, they're softer on the joints than the normal weightlifting. And we're learning to use the whole body to make the movements happen. And when you do that, there's this kind of they call it the what the heck effect. That happens with kettlebells where you just, everything feels stronger. From the tips of your fingers where the bell is to your toes that's gripping the earth as this weight is, you're having to try and stay balanced while it's happening. It's a heavy sphere with a handle on it, <laughs> you know, and what this can teach us. And then a big rubber sphere that can wobble in any direction, what this can teach us. And it's like this combination of a big unstable sphere and a heavy little sphere and the rope ties them both together for me. And that for me, it's like these simple, tools and how much fun it can be to play with these and not only how much fun it's what the gift that it can give our bodies to be able to hike mountains and swim and, and play rounders whatever it is we want to do is yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh. 
Swam in lakes, hiked mountains, had an emotional disco. <laughs> we ate amazing food together. Um, we laughed together. We cried together. Some of us cried together. I cried, you know. So it wasn't just a physical biomechanical retreat. I, I call it soul mechanics. For me, the journey of biomechanics has led me to have to recognise the soul mechanics at play that I'm still trying to learn and understand myself. But I wanted that to be a part of this retreat as well. So it wasn't just all movement and physical. And I think we were able to get a healthy dose of that without it being too planned. Ido Portal said a really nice quote about high-tech shoes, low-tech feet. And I think that applies to more than just shoes. You know, I think that applies to the technology that we use to train, all these heart rate monitors and expensive gym equipment. And the more high-tech that is, I feel like the, low, the more lower-tech and simple we're using the body. And so the more we can just use simple equipment, but in intelligent ways, then we can access the high technology of the body. When I was stumbling across this stuff with the Swiss ball, the kettlebell, the rope, I, I saw like three key principles that I, that I find. So stability, fluidity and strength for me are the three key principles that I want to focus on. Now how we do any of them is up to whoever wants to train it. I, I like to find practices that don't take maintenance. If you stop doing strength work, you get a little bit weaker over a month or so. You might lose what you made. Cardio, if you stop running or exercising in that way, that can go quite quickly. But stability, that lasts a lot longer. That children, they learn, they learn to walk and they're wobbling, and then they, they stop wobbling, they're able to walk, and then they learn to run, and then they get to the teenage years and they get to their 20s. And then maybe late 20s, early 30s, a lot of people start to get these little niggles. So that stability from that baby learning to walk has lasted them 20 odd years before these other things start to creep in. So when we, when we do the stability wall work with, with the Swiss board, for me, my journey was doing three months of, of a specific, using it in a specific way every day for 30 minutes. And now that stability is more em embodied and embedded into my body that I'm not having to do it every day and I'm not having to maintain it. Trained it for a short burst and we call it a rite of passage. So I, I did my rite of passage with the stability ball and now my body feels a lot more stable and that's going to last me for a while. It's not just going to lose, disappear in like a month like the strength training. And then the fluidity side of it with the rope, we're learning patterns and there's the expression it's like riding a bike because that's embodied, that's in, ingrained into the muscle memory. And so with the rope, it's a rite of passage. You put in a few months work, now those patterns that the rope has showed me, those functional patterns that are biomechanically sound, 
it used the tensegrity of the body. It's not just overemphasis on muscle, it's a balance of fascia, muscle, tendons, ligaments, all evenly spread. So the body's working as one unit to make things happen, not just muscling our way through. So now I've got these patterns of fluidity that last me. In 10 years' time, I could not pick up a rope for 10 years, and I know I'm going to be able to feel this pattern. So that's another practice that takes low maintenance. So we've got stability ball and the rope, fluidity and stability, low maintenance. And once they're in place, then I can do the strength work. And when I do the strength work, I want to think about, am I stable? Am I stacked? Is my knee in the right position? And what's my pattern? When I'm moving the weight from here to here, am I following that same aligned pattern, this infinity symbol? Am I using the spirals? The body wants to spiral. The forearm, the muscle wraps around the arm, it doesn't go in a straight line because there's these natural spirals in the body. So when we're moving the kettlebell, we're using, we're wringing out the muscle when there's no slack in there. And we're using that length, that tensegrity. It's not just muscling it to here, there's rotational elements. And there's this infinity with the rib cage. So there's these certain patterns going off that we've learned with the rope that we're applying then to the strength work so that when we do do it, it's less taxing. It doesn't burden the body as much. And it's fun to do. So then the maintenance is actually enjoyable. <laughs> For me, those three principles, that, I mean, there may be more that I discover in the future, but for now, well, well put together the School of Biomechanics, I'd say it's, it's my, the proudest thing I've, I've worked on in my life. And so to share that with other people that felt, feel similarly in their enjoyment of it, it was really so, like, that heart opening for me. And it feels like that's one of my life's purpose has to be to do with the body and movement. And, and to, it's a true gift when you, when you feel like you're close to disc or you've discovered your life purpose and you're able to work in that field. So I, I really feel truly blessed. And this weekend has been like a, a pin or like a, I don't know, a check in the box for like, yes, like, or just a sign I'm on the right path. Yeah, I followed Tim for a little while off and on, and and uh, I really like got attracted to the rope because like I just I thought the way that you were moving with it was so incredibly fluid, and I was just like, there's something there, there's something there, <laughs> I got to start. So like I ordered the ropes, ordered the course, and I just got super hooked. And um, I had went through an ankle injury last year. And I just felt like I was having a, a hard time like fully recovering from that. And like the rope just seemed to give me this like connection to the ground with these slight pivoting motions and like this variation through the ankle that I just wasn't really getting from like mm. traditional rehab. I mean, the other side of that is I was still able to find this like flow um, that feels really good for me. Uh, was, was still being like quite gentle on the body and, and not super impactful and mm. whatnot. I feel like on my journey, I feel like I'm, yeah, there's, there's some fun things I've found and to share it with a group of open people and to see that they find fun in it as well. It was an unbelievable, like one of the highlights of my entire life has been this weekend to share something my passions with other people in a place I love you know like yeah we all I think we all felt something um, so my love to them to you to come in um, I felt some things this weekend that I don't think I've ever felt so it's been magical for me and I hope other people got the same out of it.